Welcome to Lesson 8C, Fully Developed Pipe Flow. In this lesson, we discuss what happens beyond the entrance region, what we call the fully developed pipe flow region. We'll look at differences between laminar and turbulent fully developed pipe flow, such as velocity profile, wall shear stress, and pressure drop. And we'll do one example problem. First, let's compare laminar and turbulent fully developed pipe flow. First, we look at velocity profiles. I'll split the page in half between laminar and turbulent flow. Turns out that we can solve laminar fully developed pipe flow exactly. We'll do that in a later lesson, but there is no analytical solution for turbulent fully developed pipe flow. For laminar flow, the flow is steady. Turbulent flow is always unsteady. Recall we mentioned the 3D swirling eddies that you get in a turbulent flow. But a turbulent pipe flow can be steady in the mean. The laminar flow velocity profile is parabolic. The mean velocity profile is all that we talk about in the turbulent case and it's fuller than that of the laminar case. I'll illustrate with some sketches. This is the velocity profile for fully developed laminar pipe flow, where lowercase r is the radius, d is pipe diameter, we have a maximum speed at the center, and u is a function of r. We generally use x as the downstream coordinate. It turns out that v average equal 1 half u max, which I sketch here. As I mentioned, we do have an analytical solution, which is given by this equation, and we usually just use v instead of v average. We'll be able to derive this equation later when we talk about differential analysis of fluid flows. Now let's draw the turbulent case. We use the same coordinate system, and u is still a function of r in the mean, but the instantaneous velocity profile can look something like this, since there are all these turbulent eddies. A short time later it might look like that, and if we keep taking lots of different profile tests, we see that there's lots of scatter because of all the turbulent eddies. So what we generally do is average these over time and generate a mean velocity profile, which looks like this thick red line, which is now u of r, or u bar of r since it's an average. u max still occurs at the center line, and we can define v or v average as the average speed through the pipe. When I say the velocity profile is fuller, what that means is it's more like a top hat or one-dimensional profile compared to the laminar case, which is parabolic. In other words, it's pretty flat in the middle of the pipe and then very rapidly decays to zero near the wall. Whereas V average was a half U max for laminar flow, V average is about 85% of U max for turbulent flow. And this is a ballpark number. It does depend on Reynolds number. There's no analytical solution for turbulent pipe flow like we had for the laminar case, but you can see the textbook for some empirical equations such as a power law and a log law. I won't get into any detail about these at this point. Instead, I want to look now at the differences with respect to the wall shear stress. Recall that shear stress tau is mu du dy for simple shear flows. Again, I sketched the laminar profile, u of r. We're interested in the wall shear stress. This is the shear stress right at the wall acting on the fluid. If we let y be the distance from the wall, you see that y and r are in opposite directions. In fact, y equal capital R minus little r, where capital R is the radius. So du dy is minus du dr. You can show this by using the chain rule, taking du dy in terms of r, since y is a function of r. To avoid problems with negative signs, I'm going to just use the absolute value. So tau w is mu du dr absolute value at the wall. And we can figure out the sign. It depends if we're talking about tau wall acting on the fluid, or the fluid acting on the pipe. Here the pipe is trying to slow down the fluid due to the viscosity, so tau w is in this direction. Tau w is proportional to the slope du dy at the wall. We do the same with turbulent flow, drawing the mean velocity profile, and notice that the slope du dy is much bigger at the wall. In other words, speed u increases rapidly with distance y from the wall compared to the more slow increase for the laminar case. So tau w is much bigger. Tau w turbulent is greater than tau w laminar because of the steeper slope at the wall. How much bigger? In some cases about a factor of three if you have the same conditions except laminar versus turbulent flow. The practical implication of this is that turbulent pipe flow has a larger pressure drop for the same flow rate. Physically, since we have a larger shear stress, we have more friction, and you have to push the fluid harder to get it to
to have the same flow rate compared to the laminar case. So because of this, the pressure drop for turbulent flow is greater, and also the irreversible head loss is greater for turbulent flow than for laminar flow, again, if you have the same flow rate at the same V dot. Let's analyze the pressure drop for fully developed pipe flow. This applies to either the laminar or the turbulent case. We've done problems like this before using the conservation laws. We consider a horizontal pipe, which is round. You can use hydraulic diameter if it's not round. And we're far enough downstream from the entrance that this section of pipe is fully developed. So the velocity profile at that point is identical downstream. Call these points 1 and 2. Tau W at the wall is also constant since it's fully developed and the slope doesn't change. Note that I draw it here, but it's actually all around the pipe, the inside wall of the pipe. There's some volume flow rate, and the flow is fully developed, incompressible, and steady if it's laminar flow, or steady in the mean if it's turbulent flow. The length of this pipe section is capital L. The pressure at point 1 is P1 acting to the right. The pressure at 2 is P2 acting to the left. I'll draw P1 longer because P1 has to be greater than P2 in order to overcome friction to push this fluid through the pipe. Let's pick a control volume inside the pipe crossing 1 and 2 along the walls of the pipe. Now we apply our conservation laws. Conservation of mass is m.1 equal m.2 equal m. Dot, or rho v.1 equal rho v.2. For incompressible flow, the densities cancel, so this equation becomes v1 pi d squared over 4 equal v2 pi d squared over 4, since volume flow rate is average speed times cross-sectional area. Well, these terms cancel, and so v1 equal v2. We already knew that. Since the profile is not changing in a fully developed pipe flow, the average speed does not change. Now let's apply conservation of momentum in the x direction. This is a good review of previous lessons, by the way. Recall our workhorse formula, sigma fx equals sigma fx gravity plus sigma fx pressure, plus sigma fx viscous, plus sigma fx other, equal the sum of all the outlets of beta m dot u, minus sum over all the inlets of beta m dot u. Well, let's work on these terms. There's no gravity in the x direction. The pressure term is p1 pi d squared over 4, minus p2 pi d squared over 4. The viscous force is in the negative x direction, negative tau wall, times pi dl, where pi dl is the total wall surface area in this control volume. So tau wall acts on the entire surface area, which is pi d, the circumference, times length l. There are no other forces either in this control volume. For the momentum flow rates, everything coming out is the same as everything coming in since it's fully developed. So these terms cancel. The betas are the same, m dot is the same, and u is the same u here being the average speed in the x direction. So x momentum reduces to p1 minus p2 pi d squared over 4. Since these are the only two terms left, I'll put this term on the right side. So we have tau w pi dl on the right. The pi's cancel, one of the d's cancel, and we can rewrite this as p1 minus p2 equal 4 tau w l over d. This is the result of the x momentum equation. Again, this is valid for laminar or turbulent flow. I haven't said which we're talking about at this point. Now let's apply the head form of the energy equation for the same control volume. I'll rewrite that equation, again as good review. At the inlet we have p1 over rho g plus alpha 1 v1 squared over 2 g plus z1 plus h pump u plus the same first three terms at the outlet with subscripts 2, and then the extracted turbine head and the irreversible head loss HL. Well, some of these terms cancel. Again, since it's fully developed, alphas are the same and speeds are the same, so these two terms cancel. It's a horizontal pipe, so the Zs cancel. We have no pump, we have no turbine. So the energy equation reduces to P1 minus P2 equal rho GHL. Physically, this is the pressure drop expressed as a head, and the reason there's a pressure drop is because we have irreversible head losses due to friction in the pipe. I'll call this equation 2. Again, this holds for either laminar or turbulent flow. Now let's equate 1 and 2, since both of them have P1 minus P2 on the left-hand side, as you can see. So 4 tau W L over D from equation 1 must equal rho G H L from equation 2, where H L is 4 tau W over rho G L over D. I'll call this equation 3. We still can't use this equation because we don't know what tau W is. 
What is tau w? For laminar flow, we can solve for it exactly. For turbulent flow, we'll need some empirical equations. For either case, we previously performed a dimensional analysis, and we found that Darcy friction factor f, which is 8 tau w over rho v squared, is a function of Reynolds number and non-dimensional roughness parameter. In terms of f, the Darcy friction factor, equation 3 becomes hl equal 4 f rho v squared over 8 rho g l over d equal f v squared over 2g l over d. So we have another expression for hl, the irreversible head loss, namely f l over d v squared over 2g. I'll call this equation 4, and this will be our workhorse equation for fully developed pipe flow. Now let's do an example problem. Water at 20 degrees C flows through a long horizontal straight section of round pipe. The section under consideration is fully developed, and at a set of operating conditions, these are the known values, pipe diameter, pipe length, Reynolds number, this is definitely turbulent flow, and Darcy friction factor. We want to calculate the irreversible head losses through the pipe, HL. I'll label these parameters D, L, Reynolds number, and Darcy friction factor F. Let's use our workhorse equation. HL is F L over D, V squared over 2G. We're not given V, but we are given Reynolds number, so we'll have to calculate V from that. First of all, for water at 20 degrees C, I look up the properties. Kinematic viscosity is 1.004 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. And since RE is VD over nu, I can solve for V. V is RE times nu over D. At this point, most students would plug in their calculators and get V, but I like to stay in variable form as far as possible. So HL becomes FL over D, our expression for V squared, and 1 over 2G. This is our answer in variable form. We now know everything in this equation, so we plug in the numbers F, L, D, Reynolds number, nu, D again, that whole quantity squared, and 1 over 2G. You can verify that all the units cancel except meters, and our final answer is HL. is 17.5 meters. What does HL mean? It's the irreversible head loss due to irreversible losses in the pipe. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.